In today's macro photography tutorial, we've got a really unique subject for you. We're going to be taking a look at creating some abstract shots and exploring colour and shape using the offcuts from a CNC machine, little shards of metal all swirled up together. I'm going to get some of this stuff out and I'll show you it in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome to another macro photography tutorial where today we're taking a look at the off-cut pieces of metal from a CNC machine. Now, if you don't know what a CNC machine is, it's uh, that big machine that uh, you attach a piece of metal to and you cut in a circular fashion. That means that the off-cut pieces of metal from that machine are in really tight uh, spirals and interesting shapes. I've got some here to, uh, to show you. These have come from our CNC supplier uh, because the Adapts Look Studio has quite a lot of uh, CNC machined parts. Now you can see here already that uh, there's some really cool shapes coming out of here um, with lots of them tangled together uh, and yeah, little spirals and things. So I think adding some color using the Adapt Look Studio to uh, get some interesting lighting is going to create some really uh, abstract shots. I'm going to uh, put this stuff down onto a surface, grab some lighting and start experimenting with color and light. I think because this stuff is slightly reflective, uh, we're going to need a reflective surface to shoot on as well. My coffee table is made of glass and if you get low down enough, uh, you can get some really cool shots of the reflections from the glass. But I also have uh, this black piece of acrylic um, perspex here, uh, which has got a nice shooting surface as well. If you get something like this, or even the glass as well, the first thing to do is to give it a clean. This stuff attracts a lot of uh, fingerprints and smudges, and uh, these uh, off-cut pieces of metal, they're still covered in factory grease. So if you've got um, a nice clean surface like this, make sure to give it a wipe, make sure you're not putting fingerprints everywhere, uh, because you might not realize until you look at them close up in your uh, in your shots later on that you have fingerprints everywhere and it will be a really uh, tough time to get rid of that in Photoshop. I'm going to uh, grab some of my um, CNC offcuts now, uh, pop them down on a shooting surface and add some lighting. When you're doing artistic, abstract, creative work like this, uh, your lighting is really, really important, especially when you have a reflective uh, subject like these little shavings of metal. Uh, you can get a lot more out of your subject simply by changing your lighting around. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be experimenting with my lighting, uh, position, brightness and colour. The way that I'm going to get all of that control is using the Adapt Look Studio. I've got my uh, Adapt Look control pod here sat on a mini tripod, which is a really handy way of getting a lot of versatility out of your lighting. You can position this anywhere that you'd like, and we have a little ball head on here as well, so we can position uh, the control pod to not only counteract the weight of the lighting arms, but also get them in the exact right position. The lighting arms are when the magic really happens. If you've seen a lot of our videos, you'll know at least about the white lighting arm. Let's plug one of those in to begin with and just see what we can do with our scene just with a simple white light. Now adding that in has massively overexposed our scene, so let me just bring the shutter speed up a little bit to counter that. And you can see there that that's a pretty good start. Now, moving this lighting around is going to create a lot of different effects. Because this stuff is slightly reflective, we can get a lot of interesting effects going on, both in the foreground and the background. If I move my lighting down into the background only, you can see that we've got some really nice bokka balls going on in the background here, as the little pinpoints of light reflect off the um, spirals in the metal. Of course, we can also bring that light only down to the front, and move that around to create different shadows and reflections on that interesting spiral at the front of our image. Now with our white light, we also have the opportunity to diffuse it. If this is a little bit harsh for your liking, you can just pop a diffuser onto the end of your lighting arm and then bring that in for uh, wider reflections on your metal surfaces, but also a little bit less harshness on your shadows. 
At this point, it's really worth just experimenting with some white light, just to get a feel for how your subject reacts to the light and to see if there's anything uh, affecting your subject that isn't your dedicated light source. So if I were to unplug this light entirely, you'll see that there is still a little bit of light in this scene. That's coming from my studio lights, but also from the windows, from the lights in my room. All of these reflect on my subject because it's a very reflective subject. You're not going to be able to control all of the reflections simply by uh, having a single light source. You're still going to pick up all of the little pinpoints of light around your area. If I brighten this image up again, you can actually see that we have uh, some reflections from the tables. If I move my hand around, you can see that it changes the reflections here and those oranges from uh, the windows and the wood from the table are all going to affect our image. You might be absolutely fine with that, in which case, go for it. Use all of the different lighting sources in your room to create even more reflections. If you want to control that though, it might be worth minimizing the different light sources in your room, closing curtains and turning off light bulbs. I'm okay with there being a little bit of ambient light in these images because when I add my light into my, uh, into my scene from my Adapt Look Studio, uh, having to compensate for that is going to drastically uh, reduce the amount of ambient light that's actually uh, in my image because we're compensating for this really bright light and not for the much dimmer lights around. The next thing that I want to do is add a little bit of color. And with the Adapt Look Studio, we have a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, because I have a white lighting arm plugged in here, I'm going to talk about color filters. Now we have a lot of different colors of color filters. We've got um, a couple of different blues. We've got pink, purple, red, orange, green, and yellow. Uh, and all of these can be attached to a white lighting arm to give you some really nice effects. So I'm just going to pop off that, uh, that diffuser there and let's try a pink color filter in here instead. And you can see that that's adding a really nice soft wash of color over this image. If I go ahead and try uh, the cyan filter, it's going to add a nice cool feeling to, uh, to this shot. Of course, moving this lighting arm around again is going to create different effects and different colors in different areas of your shot. And we're not limited to only having one color here. I can add a second white lighting arm and add a different color to, uh, to a different part of my image. So adding in a second white arm here, I'm going to maybe put in a green color filter on this side and move my blue one around to the other side. So you can see there that having two lights, two different colors is creating some really nice reflections on these pieces of metal. Now, the other way to add color into your images is using a dedicated colored LED lighting arm that we can plug straight in and get direct colored light. As many of you probably know by now, I really enjoy a good abstract subject like this with a lot of reflections and a lot of interesting uh, shapes to, uh, to explore using our macro lens and our lighting. There's a lot to, uh, to think about though when it comes to our settings. Usually I don't like to talk too much about our settings because they're unique to everybody, they're unique to your lighting situation and to your subject, so everybody's going to come out with different settings regardless of what I tell you to use. I'm not going to tell you to use any specific settings here either, but there is one that you want to pay attention to. Uh, your aperture controls your depth of field. So to get all of those really nice soft bokeh balls in the background of your images, you want to use a really wide aperture, a really low F number. That's something that is uh, down to your own personal preference though. A lot of people will prefer to get more of the, uh, the subject in focus and have less of the exaggerated bokeh in the back of the image. I uh, encourage you to play around with exactly what you'd like to go for in your images, whether you want a soft focus with a large aperture or a really uh, sharp image with lots of your subject in focus and a really small aperture. You can adjust the rest of your settings to compensate for the aperture you want. You can also shoot in aperture priority mode if you're not too familiar with manual settings on your camera. I do encourage you to experiment though and to try out different apertures, different focal lengths to get different amounts of bokeh in your images. That bokeh really adds to the abstract sort of nature of these images and it lends itself to this type of reflective subject. 
One of the most interesting things about this subject is that it's quite uh, loosely knit together. It's almost like wire wool, but with giant spirals instead. That means that we can uh, focus down on different areas of this big bundle. It's almost like a cloud. I can light different areas in different colours and with different techniques, so maybe some diffusion on the front and some more harsh coloured light on the background. Then focusing in between all of these different areas creates a really interesting effect where you almost see through the closer areas and into the background. Placing uh, a single more interesting piece, say like this little spiral, down in the front gives you a focal point to, uh, to actually look at, and as you zoom past that, it almost completely disappears. I found that to be quite an interesting effect just for uh, the video work for videographers, um, focusing in past this, uh, this subject with such a low depth of field makes it practically disappear. Finding a subject like this stuff is really, really useful for exploring your own creativity. Usually uh, we think of a single technique that we'd like to try out and we go out to accomplish that. Finding uh, a subject that requires a lot of exploration and experimentation can really open your mind to a lot of different techniques and possibilities with your photography that you might not otherwise come across. Things like adding a lot of colour to your images, changing out your lighting all of the time, moving everything around and keeping everything fluid can really add to the learning experience of trying new subjects and figuring out new ways to use your photography. These little metal shavings are a fantastic macro photography subject, especially if you're trying to go for uh, some nice abstract shots and you have some coloured lighting at your disposal. Whether or not you're shooting CNC shavings like I've got or any other kind of small reflective subject, they do make for really nice abstract shots when you get lots of reflections and bokker in there. Playing around with your depth of field is also very, very important and getting those uh, nice soft bokker balls in the back of your images if you have a nice deep subject like the one that I've got today. I'd like to know what you guys think to today's creative abstract shots. Uh, put down in the comments your favourite shot from today with a little timestamp if you like to show everybody else which shots you prefer. If you enjoyed the video as a whole, make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. For now though guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time.